you got to get your mic on, yeah. If the, good morning. I'm sure glad everybody decided to come out on this beautiful sunny day. It is so nice out there today. It's absolutely wonderful, isn't it? Well, come on, be happy about it then. Oh, yeah, it sure is. Yeah. Aren't they happy, Melanie? Well, they weren't. I think they're better now. <laughs> okay. Well, maybe we can wake them up. Let's start out with I have decided to follow Jesus. 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 No turning back. No turning back, no turning back. Anyone want to clap today? Hey, but, you want to wake them up? I want to. Oh, okay. I feel like clapping, but I can't do the same, you know. You guys have to clap for me. My cross I'll carry till I see Jesus. My cross I'll carry till I see Jesus. My cross I'll carry till I see Jesus. No turning back. Good job, you guys. <coughs> I don't know if they're happy, but they're scared. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, Chapel family. <laughs> Good morning, Bobby. After all that preview that Dave did, and that's all you guys did. All right, that's good enough. Super Bowl Sunday, I figure you guys are all guilty, so you came here first. Good thing. Okay, reminder, there's a sign-up sheet in the back for snacks if you want to volunteer to help with Sunday snacks for Sunday morning. It's right there by the hot water if you want to do that. Remember, we have two good Bible studies going. There's one every other Thursday that Daryl and Melanie have with a dinner. And every Wednesday night, my group's going through Revelation. It's a light, friendly discussion. You guys are welcome to come for that. Light, friendly revelation. Absolutely. What's wrong with that picture? Absolutely. <laughs> See, you have to come find out now, aren't you? See? Please come and join us. We have two good groups going. It's a lot of fun. Our prayer request, you'll see Alicia. She's one of our casino workers. She's, uh, she gives out the cards over there at the casino. She was in ICU last week with a kidney infection. She was back to work on Friday. We had a chance to pray with her for our devotional. She's uh, better, but can still use some hope. Um, Kathy and Bob White, we have on, who had on here for a long time. Bob is home. He has been home for a while. He is ill today, and Bob's condition is very, very delicate. So we want to be praying for him that even a, even a small cold can be pretty bad news for him. So we'll be praying for Bob today. We want to pray for Joy, who's in the hospital. It's uh, Glenda Godwin's sister with congestive heart failure. And, of course, we want to pray for all those who have lost loved ones, the Lowe family and Dora, Pam's friend. Any other announcements I've missed? <coughs> Got to check uh, with the he boss. He's not saying anything, so I guess you're good. Okay. Got to check with the boss. <coughs> okay. Well, if you guys will please join me in prayer. Father, we thank you for this beautiful day here on the mountain. We thank you for this family here. We ask your Holy Spirit be here today, Father, that it fill us, that we hear your voice and we know your touch in all things. We ask, Father, we lift all our cares to you for here and for our racetrack family abroad. We ask your guidance and protection and your touch to be felt. Father, we want to pray today for Alicia. We thank you that she's back to work. Father, we ask for her continued healing if it is your wish. We want to pray for Bob White and the illness that he has right now. He has a tender condition, Father, but he and his wife, Kathy, are continually always look to you and always give you the glory. We thank you for letting them be an example for all of us. We want to pray for Joy, for her congestive heart failure in the hospital and all those caring for her. We thank you for the praise this week for baby Eliana, Father. She's doing better today. She's laughing and playing. She's out of ICU. And, Father, we want to pray for all those who have lost loved ones. We've lost a lot in our racetrack family in the last year or so. We want to pray for the Lowe family, for Dora and her family. And Father, we also don't want to forget those who are at war right now for our protection so we can be here today. We thank you, Father. We thank you for your tender whisper in our ears. We ask that you bless Daryl as he delivers the message today. 
May our hearts be light. May our eyes be focused on you and always on you. May all the glory be for you. Father, just bless us this morning in all the ways you see fit. In Jesus' name, amen. Trust and obey. process for all of us. I'll go where you want me to go. I like the chords, so.
Dear Heavenly Father, we do thank you once again for all you do for us and the moisture we've had here and the blessings you provide for us. And we ask you to be with all the people down at Sunland and the problems they're having down there and step in and take care of the things and help those people down there. They need, they need your help and they need your guidance and, and we need the, they need the situation to be corrected so that they can go on with making their living. And we ask you to be with Daryl as he brings a message today that we may hear and the message that we need in our hearts. And we'll thank you and give you all the praise for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In Paul's final words, it's really uh, appropriate when someone is passing away. What is it? What are their last words? What are, what's on their mind when they're in those last moments? And we're going to be talking about Paul today, but there's others that have had spoken last words, and it's very telling in a person's life what they're thinking about at the end. The Emperor Julian, who tried to stamp out Christianity in the Roman Empire, on his deathbed he said, You have won. O Galilean, speaking of Jesus, he knew that the battle was lost to try to fight this movement, this uh, faith that had been started. God himself was spreading Christianity across all of Europe. We hear the final words of P.T. Barnum. He said, what were today's receipts? <laughs> you know where his heart was. Alexander the Great, when I die, thrust my hands through the death shroud so the world may see that my hands are empty. People think of different things. They think of their loved ones. And for this moment, not to um, be a downer, but so to speak, but what would it be? What would be on your heart? What would be on your mind? For Paul, it was a young man named Timothy. Timothy was probably 30 years younger than Paul. He's writing, uh, Paul's writing from prison. These are called his prison epistles. His last one to write was to Timothy, but it was to all of us. And as he wrote to Timothy, he was, he was, these last words are important because he knew that coming behind him, Timothy would probably be his successor. What is it that he wanted to tell him? Those important words for each one of us, again, very revealing. For Timothy, I want to read quite a long scripture, but throughout this sermon, it's going to have points out of here that are, that are going to remind us of what is important. 2 Timothy 3, 10, 4, and 8. You, however, know all about my teaching, my way of life, my purpose, faith, patience, love, endurance, persecution, suffering. What kinds of things happened to me in Antioch, in Iconium, and Lystra? The persecutions I endured, yet the Lord rescued me from all of them. In fact, everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ, Jesus, will be persecuted, while evil men and impostors will go from bad to worse, deceiving and being deceived. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and have become convinced of, because you know those from whom you learned it. Bobby, I have a little ring in my... Did you guys hear it? Just a little bit of ring in the sound. Maybe I could lower this. I'll just lower it. Because Bobby's looking for grape juice, Melanie. You found it? Okay. How's it? That might help. Maybe I was a little too close. Because you know those from whom you've learned it and how from infancy, infancy you have known the holy scriptures which are able to make you wise for salvation through, fra through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. In the presence of God and of Jesus Christ, Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead, and in view of his appearing and his kingdom, I give you this charge, and this is the important part. Preach the word. Be prepared in season and out of season. Correct, rebuke, encourage with great patience and careful instruction. For the time will come when men will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. 
They will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to miss. But you, keep your head in all situations, endure hardship, do the work of an evangelist, discharge the duties of your ministry, for I am already being poured out like a drink offering, and the time has come for my departure. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award me on that day. And not only me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. This scripture is packed with what we need to have that abundant life, a life of significance, eternal significance. And the very first point in this that I picked up on, and I hope you did too, is that enduring of faith that Paul is calling Timothy to. He's saying, stick with it, stay with it. Endure through persecutions, endure whatever comes your way by faith. Look to God for the strength to live your life out. Find in Him everything you need to live a godly life and endure through that process of being made godly as He has called for each one of us. For Paul, he had to persevere through persecution. He had to obey the Lord in situations that were tough, but he didn't compromise on his ethics. Even when he was ridiculed, he kept enduring, and that's the call for us. It's to keep loving when we don't feel like loving. It's to keep forgiving when we feel like, oh, I deserve, I don't want to forgive this person. I want to hold back. And yet God is saying forgive. And he's saying to sacrifice when we, we think of ourselves and we want to just, you know, treat ourselves and be away from everybody. God is saying, look at the needs of others. Put yourself behind those needs and reach out to those who are in need. These are the kind of things that as an enduring Christian, these are what comes to the surface throughout our lives. This is the character of the Christian that God has called us to live out, those character traits, to endure, to follow through with a commitment. There was a newlywed couple, and a lot of times in newlywed couples you'll find that tension. You'll find the, the fighting. And this, this new bride, she said, listen, Let's just both pray that one of us dies and I can go live with my mom. <laughs> Pastoral advice, sleep with one eye open, young man. <laughs> you know, but it takes enduring though, doesn't it? And in a relationship, it takes forgiving. It takes going through some hard times, but when you get through, there's a great, a great relationship that is built through trials. And it's the same in our Christian faith when we endure through things. Our faith is strengthened. When we go through the death of a loved one or whatever is happening in your life, the things that want to knock you down, when you go through those things, you come out on the other side with a strength of faith that is evident to all around, those around you watching. And they can see in you that strength that God has given you and you give Him praise and glory for it. Others will see in your life that through challenges, you look to Him. Through the crosses that He gives each one of us, through that cross that He's given us to carry, we are refined like gold through that process. 